All right, let's talk about the legendary Cliff Burton. Known for his incredible talent and unique style, Cliff Burton was a key member of the iconic heavy metal band Metallica. Born on February 10, 1962 in California, Cliff joined Metallica in 1982 and quickly became a fan favorite. Cliff's contributions to Metallica were immense. His melodic and intricate bass lines added a new dimension to the band's sound and helped shape their early albums such as Kill Em All, Ride the Lightning, and Master of Puppets. His memorable solos, like the one in Orion, showcased his technical prowess and musicality. Sadly, Cliff's life was cut short while touring with the band in Sweden. On the fateful night of September 26, 1986, Metallica's journey between tour dates took a tragic turn. Bassist Cliff Burton and guitarist Kirk Hammett found themselves deciding who would get to choose a bunk on their tour bus. As fate would have it, Burton drew the ace of spades and opted for the bunk Hammett had been occupying. In hindsight, Hammett reflected on the incident in VH1's Behind the Music, saying, I said fine, take my bunk. I'll sleep up front. It's probably better anyway. Little did they know that this seemingly inconsequential decision would have devastating consequences. As they traveled through Sweden, tragedy struck when their bus veered off the road and flipped over on its side. It was a horrifying incident, and unfortunately, Burton, who had won the bunk by drawing the ace of spades, was now peacefully asleep in the top bunk. The force of the accident was so intense that Burton was tragically thrown through a window. As if fate wasn't cruel enough, the bus then came crashing down on top of him, sealing his untimely fate. According to reports, desperate attempts were made to rescue Burton from underneath the bus. A crane was brought in with hopes of lifting it and freeing him. However, things took a devastating turn when the crane slipped, causing the bus to crash down on top of Burton once again. The exact moment of Burton's passing remains uncertain, whether it occurred upon the initial impact or when the bus descended once again. Regardless, this promising young star met his end at the scene, leaving behind a void in both the music industry and in the hearts of those who knew and admired him. Let's talk about Randy Rhodes, shall we? Randy Rhodes was an influential and highly talented guitarist who made a significant impact on the world of rock music. Born on December 6, 1956 in Santa Monica, California, Rhodes displayed massive talent from a young age that would gain widespread recognition as a member of the band Quiet Riot in the late 1970s. However, it was his collaboration with Ozzy Osbourne that solidified his place in rock music history. Rhodes joined Osborne's band in 1979 and played on two iconic albums, Blizzard of Oz, 1980, and Diary of a Madman, 1981. Known for his guitar playing and innovative techniques, Randy Rhodes pushed the boundaries of rock music with his intricate solos and melodic compositions. His style blended classical influences with heavy metal elements, creating a unique sound that captivated audiences worldwide. But... Randy Rhodes' life was cut short at the age of 25 in a prank gone wrong. All right, buckle up for a wild story. Picture this. It's 1982, and Randy Rhodes is on tour with Ozzy Osbourne rocking stages across the country. But during one particular stop in Leesburg, Florida, something unexpected happened. After a long night of driving, their tour bus made a pit stop at Flying Baron Estates. This place was no ordinary rest stop. It was owned by the Calhoun Brothers Tour Bus Company and had its own airstrip complete with helicopters and small planes. Talk about fancy. Tour bus driver and private pilot Andrew Acock decides to take a little detour from his usual gig. Without any permission, he hops into a single-engine Beechcraft F-35 and takes off into the sky. And guess who he brings along for the adventure? Keyboardist Don Airy and tour manager Jake Duncan. Now here's where things get even more interesting. During their first flight, Acock actually buzzed the tour bus in an attempt to wake up drummer Tommy Aldridge. Talk about an unconventional wake-up call. After all that excitement, they safely land and decide to go for round two. Rhodes, despite his fear of flying, was determined to capture some breathtaking aerial photos of the countryside for his mother. He had even tried to convince Rudy Sarzo to accompany him on the flight, but Sarzo opted for some much-needed extra sleep instead. During the second flight, there were more daring attempts to buzz the tour bus. 
Acock managed to pull off two close passes successfully, but unfortunately, things didn't go as planned during the third attempt. At around 10 a.m., things took a terrifying turn when the plane had been airborne for about five minutes. And while attempting to buzz the tour bus once again, tragedy struck. One of the plane's wings clipped the tour bus, causing the wing to snap into two pieces. The impact sent the plane into a chaotic spiral, completely losing control. In an unfortunate sequence of events, the plane then sliced through the top of a tall pine tree before crashing directly into the garage of a nearby mansion. The impact was catastrophic as flames engulfed the wreckage. Tragically, Rhodes, Acock, and Youngblood lost their lives instantly in this devastating accident. Despite his short-lived career, Randy Rhodes left an indelible mark on the music world. Rest in peace, Randy Rhodes. On February 3, 1959, a devastating event occurred that forever changed the landscape of rock and roll music. American musicians Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the big bopper J.P. Richardson, along with pilot Roger Peterson, lost their lives in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa. This event would later become known as the Day the Music Died, a phrase coined by singer-songwriter Don McLean in his iconic 1971 song, American Pie. During the Winter Dance Party Tour across the Midwest, Buddy Holly and his band, along with many rising artists, faced challenging conditions. The long journeys between venues were particularly difficult due to the cold weather and uncomfortable tour buses. These adverse conditions had a negative impact on the performer's health. Many of them suffered from cases of flu and even frostbite as a result of traveling in such harsh conditions. In a twist of fate, frustrated with the conditions on the tour buses, Holly decided to charter a plane to reach their next venue in Moorhead, Minnesota. Richardson, who was suffering from the flu, swapped places with Jennings and took his seat on the plane. Meanwhile, Al Sup lost his seat to Valens in a coin toss. Unfortunately, tragedy struck soon after takeoff. It was late at night and the weather conditions were poor and wintry. The pilot lost control of the light aircraft, a Beechcraft Bonanza, which tragically crashed into a cornfield. This devastating incident resulted in the loss of all lives on board. The loss of these talented musicians had a profound impact on the music industry and their fans. Buddy Holly was an influential figure in early rock and roll with hits like Peggy Sue and That'll Be the Day. Richie Valens was a rising star known for his energetic performances and timeless songs such as La Bamba. J.P. Richardson, also known as The Big Bopper, was a popular radio personality turned musician who had achieved success with his hit single Chantilly Lace. It serves as a heartbreaking reminder of how fragile life can be and how unexpected events can change everything in the blink of an eye. Jim Croce, the American folk and rock singer-songwriter, had quite the journey in his music career. Between 1966 and 1973, he blessed us with five studio albums and a plethora of hit singles. But it wasn't always smooth sailing. During this period, he faced the harsh reality of needing to pay the bills while pursuing his passion. To make ends meet, he took on a series of odd jobs. However, that didn't deter him from continuing to pursue his dreams. It was during the early 1970s that his fortunes began to change for the better. He formed a partnership with songwriter and guitarist Maury Mulison. This collaboration proved to be a turning point in his career. In 1972, Jim experienced a breakthrough with his third album, You Don't Mess Around With Jim. This album not only showcased his talent, but also produced three charting singles. One of these singles was Time in a Bottle, which actually reached number one after his untimely demise. Following the success of You Don't Mess Around with Jim, he released his follow-up album, Life and Times. This album featured the iconic song, Bad, Bad, Leroy Brown, which quickly climbed to the top of the charts, securing its place at number one, but on September 20, 1973, tragedy struck the music world when Jim and five others met an unfortunate fate. This devastating event occurred at the height of his popularity, and just one day before the release of the lead single to his highly anticipated fifth album, I Got a Name. On the night of Thursday, September 20, 1973, tragedy struck during Jim's Life and Times tour. 
The tour, which had been scheduled for 45 dates, came to a devastating halt when a chartered plane crashed into a tree during takeoff from the Natchitoches Regional Airport. This heartbreaking incident claimed the lives of Jim and five others. At just 30 years old, Jim's promising career as a singer-songwriter was tragically cut short. The other victims of the crash included pilot Robert N. Elliott, Jim's bandmate Maury Mulisen, comedian George Stevens, manager and booking agent Kenneth Cortese, and road manager Dennis Rast. The news sent shockwaves through fans and the industry alike, leaving a void that could never be filled. It serves as a somber reminder of how fragile life can be, even in moments of great success. Lee Harvey was a talented musician and guitarist best known for his work with the band Stone the Crows. Born in Glasgow, Scotland on September 13, 1945, Leslie Harvey began playing guitar at a young age and quickly developed a unique style that blended blues, rock, and jazz influences. In the late 1960s, Leslie Harvey formed the band Stone the Crows alongside his brother, Alex Harvey. The band gained recognition for their energetic live performances and powerful blues rock sound. Leslie's guitar playing was a standout feature of their music, characterized by his soulful solos and dynamic riffs. But Leslie Harvey's promising career would be cut short. On May 3rd, 1972, a tragic incident occurred during a live performance by Stone the Crows at a top-ranked suite in Swansea. Lee Harvey, the guitarist of the band, was electrocuted on stage in front of a live audience. The accident happened when Harvey touched a microphone that was not properly grounded while his other hand was holding the strings of his guitar. Despite attempts by a roadie to unplug the guitar and an immediate call for an ambulance, Harvey's injuries were fatal. This unfortunate incident resulted in Lee Harvey's untimely death at the young age of 27. This incident stands as a somber moment in music history, forever marking Lee Harvey's untimely demise during what should have been another great show for Stone the Crows and their fans. Stevie Ray Vaughan was an influential and highly acclaimed American guitarist and singer-songwriter. Born on October 3, 1954 in Dallas, Texas, Vaughan's career took off in the 1980s as he became a prominent figure in the blues rock genre. Known for his exceptional guitar skills and soulful voice, Stevie Ray drew inspiration from blues legends such as Albert King, B.B. King, and Jimi Hendrix. He developed a unique style that blended traditional blues with elements of rock and jazz. His breakthrough came with the release of his debut album, Texas Flood, in 1983. The album showcased his virtuosic guitar playing and passionate vocals, earning him critical acclaim and a dedicated fan base. He went on to release several successful albums throughout his career, including Couldn't Stand the Weather, Soul to Soul, and In Step. Unfortunately, Stevie Ray Vaughan's life was cut short in a horrible accident. On Monday, August 27, 1990, a tragic incident occurred at Alpine Valley Music Festival in East Troy, Wisconsin. After an all-star encore jam session featuring Vaughn and members of Eric Clapton's touring entourage, Vaughn boarded a Bell helicopter to head to Chicago. This mode of transportation was commonly used by performers to enter and exit the venue due to the single road in and out that was heavily traveled by fans. Shortly after takeoff, the helicopter crashed into a nearby ski hill. Vaughn and four others on board, the pilot, Jeff Brown, agent Bobby Brooks, bodyguard Nigel Brown, and tour manager Colin Smythe all lost their lives in the crash. Stevie Ray Vaughan, the legendary blues guitarist, was laid to rest on August 31st, 1990 at Laurel Land Cemetery in Dallas, Texas. The funeral service was a public ceremony attended by notable musicians and friends of Vaughan. Among those present were Jeff Healy, Charlie Sexton, ZZ Top, Colin James, Stevie Wonder, Bonnie Raitt, and Buddy Guy. The ceremony served as a tribute to Vaughn's immense talent and the impact he had on the music industry. It brought together musicians from various genres who had been influenced by his unique style and virtuosity. At his gravesite in Laurel Land Cemetery, Vaughn's grave marker bears a heartfelt inscription from fellow musicians that reads, Thank you for all the love you passed our way. This serves as a poignant reminder 
of the profound impact he had on both his fans and fellow musicians during his all too brief career. The funeral service for Stevie Ray Vaughan stands as a testament to his enduring legacy and the lasting impression he left on those who knew him personally or through his music. Mm -hmm. 